Have you ever received handwritten love letters, Aigen? Hmm. My first love story depended on handwritten letters, which were waited eagerly for days. And I had carried a big bunch of letters long after the relationship ended. <laughs> what about you? Not really. I have always been a computer written limericks type of girl. This is the Turkish Coffee Podcast by Nazlan Ertan and Aigen Aytaç, two witty women who have been friends for decades as they traveled and worked all over the world. Today, as you may have guessed, we'll discuss love letters and other demonstrations of love. Well, after all, we have Valentine's Day this weekend. And we'll take a look at who celebrates it, who is against it, and how these celebrations have evolved in Turkey. Or whether it has become completely outdated. Let's start with love letters. I carried mine for many years and through a lot of cities until they got lost in one of my many moves. Fortunately, for us readers, many poets and writers took more care of them than I did. Today, we can read them in the form of great books. Think, for example, the 20th century Turkish poet Orhan Veli Kanık's letters to his secret love, Nahit. Even the name of the book is enough to explain their depth. I am looking only for you. Orhan Veli mentioned her in one of his poems, but kept her name out. His poem, I am Orhan Veli, goes... I have a girlfriend who's very respectable, so I won't mention her name. Let the literary historians find out. I love it. But it took literary historians 70 years until Nahit Pratli decided to publish the love letters in 2014. In one of these love letters, Orhan Veli says, Nahit, you talk about the things which exist in between us. You are the only existing thing for me. Beware. I am not saying the most, but the only. I don't have anything except you, and I don't want anything except you. And the worst part is that she did not believe his sincerity in the beginning, right? But when we read the letters, we immediately do. Books themselves are like love letters. They are destined for a particular person, according to British author Lawrence Durrell. But fortunately for us readers, we can read them even if they are not destined for us. Yes, and we cannot help but admire how eloquent these novels are. Take famous Turkish painter Abidin Dino's book, which consists of love letters to his wife. He tells it all in the title of the book. Without you, everything is colorless. Just as you would expect from a great painter. And we ask ourselves, if that is what true love is, what is ours? A big lie? <laughs> For a little more inspiration to warm our cold, socially distant and tinder-hardened hearts, let's see what well-known Turkish poet Nazım Hikmet wrote to his dear Piraye from many different prisons for two decades without any hope of coming together again. Your eyes are like two stars. Your friendly eyes like two huge clear stars which lead me through the sky. Nazım Hikmet, known as the Blue-Eyed Giant, wrote many love letters and love poems for Piraye and later for Vera. A revolutionary and a romantic, he was truly irresistible. He spent most of his life in prison or exile and away from his loved ones. But longing feeds love, doesn't it? Yes. Well, if it doesn't, then intimacy may reduce love, no? That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but love letters mean loyalty despite the distance. Most love letters show passion suppressed and, of course, a great deal of insecurity. Ah, yes, like those of the English poet Vita Sackville West to the famous writer Virginia Woolf. Tortured in her pain and longing, Vita writes to Virginia the following. I am reduced to a thing that wants Virginia. I just miss you in a quite simple, desperate human way. I suppose you're accustomed to people saying these things. Damn you, spoiled creature, I shan't make you love me anymore by giving myself away like this. But oh my dear, I can't be clever and standoffish with you. I love you too much for that. How strange to hear those from Vita Sackville West, a very haughty aristocrat. But Wolf made it up to her by basing one of her most famous characters, Orlando, on Vita. Vita's son described the book as the longest and most charming love letter in literature. Hmm. But here we are on the subject of same-sex love. 
which Turkish interior minister Süleyman Soylu said does not exist in our past, but exported from the West. <laughs> Hardly true when you consider Ottoman poetry and art. Remember Nedim and his 18th century verse in which he expressed his desire for a young boy. You have the coquetry of a virgin girl and the voice of a tall, handsome man. You cause such trouble, oh my beloved. I'm not quite sure whether you are a girl or a boy. How playful. Yes, playful teasing is surely better than nagging when it comes to expressing love. Take Alexander Pope, one of the greatest wits in the English literature. He sounds like a grumpy old man in his letters to Lady Montagu. I might be dead for all I see of you. My face is swollen. Nothing will do me so much good as seeing you. This guy should definitely get a vinegar valentine. <laughs> What's a vinegar valentine? It's a nasty postcard, often with a short but vindictive poem, which explains why you do not like a certain person. It was widely practiced in the 19th century, in the United States or in the United Kingdom. They were often sent without a signature and not just to friends or family. You could send a vinegar card to a store clerk, a teacher or a neighbor. Feminists or suffragettes were often targeted. Here is the forefather of mean tweets. I can't imagine anything further than the spirit of Saint Valentine than this. But who is Saint Valentine again? I never quite figured it out. Well, some would say that the original Saint Valentine is Eros, the mythological Shirab, the little angel with wings, who has the uncomfortable habit of piercing people's hearts with his arrow when you are least expecting it. Others say it's a 3rd century Roman saint, either a priest or a bishop in the Roman Empire. But my favorite interpretation is that the ultimate idea around the whole thing has been about celebrating the spring season and refers to love towards nature and arts, not just another human being. This whole nature orientation makes sense. February 15 can be when nature begins to reawaken. We are certainly having that now, such beautiful weather. It certainly is. I started to wake up with birds actually. And this takes me to one of my favorite love letters, the one written by the famous Hermann Hesse to the trees in 1920. He writes, When we are stricken and cannot bear our lives any longer, then a tree has something to say to us. Be still. Be still. Look at me. Life is not easy. Life is not difficult. Those are childish thoughts. Home is neither here nor there. Home is within you. Or home is nowhere at all. Hess was very much influenced by Buddhism as we see in his masterpiece Siddhartha, right? Yes. According to Buddhists, we are all one, interconnected with each other, including the trees. This kind of humanistic mysticism was also very prevalent in the Middle East in the 13th century. We see this concept in the story of Leila and Mejnun. The Romeo and Juliet of the East. Exactly. There are many versions of this legend, but in a nutshell, Mejnun and Leila are in love with each other, but cannot marry because of a family feud. Mejnun wanders around the wilderness for years, longing for his Leila, and in my favorite interpretation, when Leila eventually gets over her obstacles and finds him, he has replaced his material love for her with a newfound love of nature and life itself. Then poor Leila, who has battled with her family for years to marry this tree-hugging fool, goes and commits suicide. Usually, letters mean distance. They were written from jail, exile, or front lines. Remember Napoleon kept writing to Josephine and Suleiman the Magnificent to Huram from military campaigns. And in the 21st century, at least in the pre-pandemic days, we have been used to instant access. It may be that modern technology has its own advantages too, like the ability to reach your partner at all times, no matter where you are, through texts, Instagram and FaceTime. Well, today's youth is certainly making a lot of use of technology in their relationships. Yes, apparently Tinder, one of the main many dating applications, has more than 1 million subscribers in Turkey. How come then there is so much loneliness, where it has become so easy to meet someone online? 
Well, many philosophers believe love, unpredictable, chance-based, crazy, should be saved from technology. But good right. news is that even the new generation use technology to meet. But according to surveys, when things get serious, they prefer to declare their love face to face. Makes sense. These surveys have been repeated for more than a decade now. Did they find any change in young people's behaviors? Not really. But one interesting point was that ever since last year, majority of the young people want something handcrafted for Valentine's Day. A marketing advice for the producers of the tasteless fluffy bears and heart-shaped red cushions that are sold everywhere. Yes, they are so vulgar, aren't they? So are all the tacky street decorations and awful overpriced parties. But they seem to have died down in the late 2010s, even before the pandemic. In fact, for some of the young generation, Valentine's Day is simply outdated. Well, perhaps the young generation, which is more down to earth, realizes that you can't pin love on a date. They see it as the commercial trap that it has become. And judging from my days in the corporate world, they're right. But there is one group that is even more anti-Valentine's Day than all the anti-capitalists put together, the Turkish Director General for Religious Affairs. Theirs is an objection that dates from years. In 2011, I remember that their statement lambasted the day as commercial exploitation. Actually, there I agree with them. However, I strongly disagree when they said it was all right to celebrate it with a spouse or a fiancé. <laughs> Rather than with a lover. <laughs> Given all this, I wonder if the Interior Ministry's statement that it will allow flower shops to deliver on Valentine's Day would irritate them. It certainly makes me surprised. Given the hard times the small businesses are going through because of the pandemic, I think we should send flowers and other small gifts this year. To the extent that people can afford to buy them, of course. Most of what I have seen building up to the Valentine's Day is recipes for homemade dinners at home if you're in couple, or invites to Clubhouse chat rooms if you're single. Oh yes, Clubhouse is the absolute new craze in Turkey. There are constantly conversations on everything under the sun. And of course, many on Valentine's Day nowadays such as the conversations on what is your worst Valentine's Day celebration. <laughs> or rooms that promise to find you a partner for the day. If you had to choose anyone you like to spend Valentine's Day, who would you choose? I'm tempted to name a favorite author, but I'm afraid I will end up disliking him and his works if we meet in person, which is often the case. Right. And you? My husband. No, let's say for the sake of the game, anyone but him, dead or alive. In that case, I would say deceased actor Mushvik Kenter to recite the poetry of Orhan Veli. Or James McAvoy, the British actor and singer who played Cyrano de Bergerac in rap. Ah. But Mushfik Kantar, the Turkish version of Sir Lawrence Olivier, could both recite Orhan Veli and play Sirena de Bergerac. What a great choice. There are so few great actors, but so many demonstrations of love. Yes, love is a many splendored thing, whether it's expressed in sonnets or in rap, or whether it starts from a glance at the balcony, ends with a handwritten letter, or starts in Tinder and ends with blocking. You mean it starts with an expectation and ends with disappointment? In heartbreak or in a wisecrack? I understand the heartbreak, but how does it end with a joke? Well, my heroine, the American poet Dorothy Parker, was notorious for her ill-fated affairs. But she said goodbye to each lover with satirical words, such as this one. Oh, beggar or prince, no more, no more. Be off and away with your strut and show. The sweeter the apple, the blacker the core. Scratch a lover and find a foe. <laughs> this is a true vinegar valentine. Yes. Should we end with a sweeter message though? Yes. Let's end with a hope. Despite all the commercial connotations we all agree on, just for this year, let's give a hand to the flower sector and take the opportunity to send flowers. If you can't find any. It seems that 70 million roses and other flowers were exported to 22 countries two weeks before St. Valentine's Day. Okay, <laughs> in that case, try handmade chocolates and even a handwritten love letter. And see you next week. See you. Stay with love. <laughs> and hug a tree. <laughs> <laughs>